Hello and welcome back to Postcards from Moet Rock. I am your host Cthulhu and I am squeezed into a much too tight football shirt that I've had for a bit too long. Ryder Rovers, that's why. Did the 80, 1980 annual last time, a couple of months ago now. Um, I'll look up the uh, prog number. But um, uh, this is 1981. Let's see if it's any better than the last one, because that one uh, didn't really stand. Oh, it's okay. I get to I get to um, demanding of things that were meant for like ten year olds. I would I would have been twelve when this was out. All right, we start with Royal Rovers itself. For several seasons, Roy Race, player manager of First Division Melchester Rovers, had been the scorer of many brilliant goals for his club, but now. The press, it's all over the sports pages. Uh, no goals. Roy to drop himself a vital cup tie. Will Roy's goal famine end? Has the race goal machine dried up? You get that all the time, and they got nothing to write about when there's nothing happening, so it's all a big disaster, isn't it? Well, I suppose it is. For some reason, Tony Blackburn's getting involved here. Don't know why. But anyway. They're all turning up to the ground on the night of an important cup tie against Knight and Town. Um, but also turning up is Mystico. Mystico is like, as seems to be some sort of stage magician, fortune teller, like Darren Brown type. Okay, so this is Roy's ninth game without a goal, and this is apparently unprecedented. So, but we go to on a flashback. With Mystico. Roy Race turns up to a Mystico night. And an old variety fair that probably hadn't existed for 50 years before this. Uh, that probably not done us exaggeration. But um, Mystico asks Roy Race to come up on stage because he sees he's got a celebrity in the audience. But Roy's like, oh, you know, I'm just out with my missus, you know. Thanks for the applause, thanks for the invite, but I just want to enjoy myself watching the show don't want to take part mystico gets the right hump with this you've made the great mystico very angry and uh he basically is written in the stars that your career is about to falter the goal scoring talent that you enjoy so much will desert you i state before this audience that you will not score for 10 games and because of this melchester shall be knocked out of the fa cup wow Anyway, Roy, I didn't ask for that. Keep your stupid predictions to yourself. We shall see, Roy Race, we shall see. It's a bad dark turn, this one, isn't it? Anyway, he hasn't scored for ages. Roy's thinking back over all the other games he's played. His fifth game, when he hit the post. Oh, it seemed a certain goal, but my luck's run right out. And uh, his teammates tried to help him. Blackie Gray's like, he's got an easy shot, but he passes to Roy, and he gets cut out by a defender, and he's like, oh. When is it ever going to go right? Of course, Mystico's getting a lot of publicity out of this, so he's happy. So they all, the press want to know if, uh, and the fans, they want to know if he's had um, a curse put on him. But, you know, my, my run of bad luck continued. Brilliant save! What has Roy got to do to score? So, people are getting a bit annoyed. Penny, his wife, he's like, you know, you don't seriously believe that, Roy. Roy has dropped himself for this cup toy. But uh, the players aren't doing too well. And, uh, they, I mean, that's a terrible miss, that. This guy here, they're getting lucky, Rovers. So, you know, luck balances out, doesn't it? Um, the keeper's playing well, though. He's keeping them in it. So, at half-time... Roy's like, it's not a lack of effort, but more a lack of confidence. So uh, he didn't really help, didn't really offer a solution. He's put his finger on a problem, he's got no solution. So anyway, Noel Baxter's wrenched his knee. So Roy Race comes on, but he comes on as he comes on as his defender. He's gonna play fullback because that's that's where the injured player was. This is in the days when you only had like two, one, one, three subs to choose from, something like that. I mean, it weren't too long before this. It might even be this. You only had one sub, and I had to play. You had to pick any, any. It's quite a versatile sub, really. Anyway, 
Mystico's having a laugh at that. Ha, ah, the famous Roy Race is playing as a defender. He will never score from that position. But um, he's actually playing quite well. And he's uh, he's starting some moves. Starting some moves going. They're actually getting up the pitch. And... Uh, well, oh, just a, a, it, the the night and goal is under pressure now, and there's a bell. There's a, a like, fingertip save from the keeper, and there's a corner. And uh, well, the keeper punches it out. The ball falls to Roy Race because he's a bit back for back, see, because he's 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 a fullback. They tend to wait around the centre circle of corners. So, um, anyways, miss it. it. And it's just bobbled into the penalty area, caught some bloke off balance. He's miss, he's miskicked it, and it's sliced into the corner of the net. The, the, the guy, the, even one of their defenders, got in the way of the goalkeeper's despairing lunge. So, Mr. Coe's got the ump here. No, no, I said Roy Race did not score. The ball touched someone else before it entered the net. Ah, shut up, big head. Yeah, clear off. You caused enough trouble. They'd kick him out, really. Throwing things at him. Apple cores. I don't know why they all took apples. I don't know. Anyway, he's broken the jinx and he scores a diving header. They go through. That's right then, isn't it? That turned out alright. Didn't like that Mr. Cogiso. He was a bit of a roughing. Anyway, it's a tech story now. I don't get, I'm not going through the tech story. I did read it. It's basically Roy gets injured and he picks a youth team player and the youth team player uh, he goes he starts really well but he goes off the boil and they find out that he's being conned by some people who's telling him his kid's sick but it's not kids it's a bloke dressed up as a kid he hadn't spotted it so this strip is a bit weird the boy who hated football. It's not really the place, really. I'm not sure why it's in a football comic, but I suppose it's a contrast. Probably run out of story ideas, really, don't they? But uh, this boy, he hates football, but his, uh, his granddad or someone, just says an elderly relative, he's left him £5 a week pocket money if he plays football once, like, every week. So, um... He's got the ump about this, but he wants his fiver. I mean, in the 70s, that, oh, 50 quid today, that would that would be. So, anyway, what he's doing, he's, he's at the fairground. And he says, oh, look, there's a football shire. It's a coconut shire where you kick the ball instead of throwing it. Fair enough. Um, he says, well, that'll count. That, that's, that's taking part in football. So, I'll get my fiver. So, um, he got, obviously, because he don't play football, as he kicks the ball at his coconuts, well, he just, he's useless. He kicks one, goes right into the roof of the tent. He kicks the second one, he just falls over. And there's some, there's some, there's some bigger kids there taking the mickey out of him. And, and he, he winds himself up for a really big one. And he kicks it over into the next tent at all the prizes for the lucky dip. So his dad has to pay for all those damages. And uh, his mum says, just give up. Just give up, John. You're rubbish, John. You're rubbish. I should have to say that. Don't you think you should give up, John? She's uh, not very supportive, but he hates football anyway, so probably don't care. But he wants his fibre, so he's going to keep going. He's fourth and fifth attempts. Oh, one, one was one missed. One glances the coconut, but doesn't knock it off. So he's actually getting better. It's his practice. See, this is what his uh, elderly relative was after, I suppose. Trying to get him in by stealth. But uh, anyway, boots it. It's one of the uh, posts holding his tent up. Knocks the old tent down. And his dad's got a hell of a lot to pay for now. I think he's taking several tents down. So, um... It's, uh, obviously, the stall owl is very angry. But he says, look, I've knocked all the coconuts over. I mean, everything's down. It's a complete chaos. So he says, I'll oh, take them. I will never want to see you again. And his dad has to pay for the damages again. So, 
he's like, oh, I've got a load of coconuts and uh, I don't have to play football now for, for this week. And he said, uh, I'm going to get me fiver. That's good to know, says his dad, because I calculate that it's going to take you from now to the next football season to pay me back what you've cost me a day, so you'd better keep interested in football. Yeah, after this, I still hate football. I really do. We've got no sympathy for him. We don't like football. Anyway, this next one, Tommy's Troubles. Tommy's, uh, it's that, it's like Barnes United. Tommy Barnes has started the football team. He ain't got no money to keep it going. No forethought. But anyway, they're playing this match. Tubby Jones is their best player. He's going around everybody. He's putting the ball in. He's assisting. He's scoring. He's doing it. He's doing it all. But he's got to, he's got to go, uh, They've got a cup game coming up because he's got to go and see his granny. Trouble. It's trouble being a kid. It's very poor positioning from the opposition team there. They've just left him. There's two, there's two players marking their own goalie. They're leaving Tommy, the opposition centre forward, complete. There's something about the way they draw these these uh, goals. It just, it's not, it's not real football. I don't know why they do it. I mean, the art's good enough. It's just they're all in the weird positions. I know for a fact one of the artists was a big football fan who actually played amateur football. So, don't think this is him. Might be. Apparently he did the annuals. He's going to miss two games. So they're going to need a replacement. So they basically, but they put an advert uh, in, um, well, he, Every team member placed a poster on his gate. Not the best advertising strategy. But they get this guy turn up, Frank Lampton. Sounds a bit like Frank Lampard, that, doesn't it? Anyway, he turns out to be really good. He seems to be a class above the rest of the team. So, um, they're all really pleased with this. But he comes with scouts. Two men, officials from a local league club. Make a note of that lad, Ken, the number six, Frank Lampton. I mean, Tommy's playing pretty well. Nice back hill to assist there for Lampton to smack one in. But, um, I mean, Lampton, he's just constantly training. He never stops kicking a ball. That's why he passes so accurately. Practice makes perfect. So, I mean, Lampton keeps his place for the second game, obviously. He's the best player they've ever seen. But he has to anyway, because Tubby's not back. There's no there's no uh, room for error with this team. They haven't got any extra players at all. It's an odd game. Um, it starts to rain. But um, Lampton helps out and uh, sets Tommy up for a goal. These two scouts... Very keen on Lampton. Lampton again. That boy's got it. The boy Barnes is good, but I think Lampton's a little older and stronger. That explains why it's a bit better. Goes a long way at that age. Goal! That's it. We've won. We're into the second round. So, yeah, it's worked out. The scouts come up after the match, talk to Lampton. He says, they, they want him to play for. Who is it they want him to play for? We have a team in the Central Boys League. Horton City. Right, Lampton's, you know, they want him to play for them. He said, well, we are have to ask Tommy. He's very honourable. He's only played for them two matches. And he was only, you know, covering Tubby. So, Tommy's OK with that. You go with our blessing. Join Orton City, Frank. Honestly, you're miles better than anyone at Barnes United. Take your chance, pal. So, that's good. Tubby comes back. I knew you wouldn't find anyone good enough to replace me. And they're all like, our trouble was... We found someone who was too good. That probably confuses him. Not worry him. Stop him being so arrogant, on it? Might, might do. Anyway, get those pictures of footballers. The quiz. Oh, I can't. Don't really want to do a quiz. Anyway, this is Mighty Mouse. Kevin Mouse, known as Mighty Mouse, was a star striker and left winger of First Division Tottenford Rovers. He was also a part-time medical student. One Saturday afternoon, during a tough team match against close rivals Chelbury Athletic, he's, um, you see his fingers, his mouse, he's very small, he's a bit rotund, so uh, he's not really the average footballer. Anyway, he gets completely taken out by this giant defender. The ref says, play on, play on, no foul. 
Um, Mouse is not very happy about that. The crowd are very, very angry. But Mouse is giving himself the old magic spray on his ankle. And the ref's like, if you want to do that, kindly leave the pitch. So, And then he sneezes all over uh, Mouse. Says it's the spray makes him sneeze. Very nice ref, this. Don't like him. Yeah, if I need to look at him. Anyway, there's a, there's a collision. It's free kick to Chelbury. So it's like rubbish, ref. You're all whistle. Why don't you swallow the pee? And it looks 50 50, but the free kick's got to Chelbury. But we know about this ref. It's for the same dodgy about this ref. Mouse is given the uh, the opposing team defender a quick once over because of his medical student background. But the ref's really angry. Get on with the game. And then minutes later, there was an almighty collision between two Chelbury players. Ref probably still gives that as free kick to Chelbury. But um, Mouse is on the spot and he's calling the trainer on. The ref's very angry about that. I'm in charge. Any more interference and you'll be in the book. Mouse is going up the wing. And he gets taken out by this giant defender again. It must be a penalty, ref. It must be the surest penalty I've ever seen. Play on. No penalty. Ref's definitely crooked, isn't he? Anyway, Mouse calls the trainer on for himself. He gets, he's just like somebody else giving him the magic spray. He's not allowed to do it himself. And he gets booked. He says, I'm the ref. I called him on. So, Mouse is getting really like down in the dumps now. Match ends nil-nil. The opposing team, and like our ref was pathetic. He couldn't, he couldn't take charge of a table football game. You were only trying to be sporting by treating some of us. So, Mouse drives off in the ump. He's got his like, little noddy car. And he witnesses this terrible accident where a guy just drives straight into a lamppost. Because his tyres burst, apparently. But uh, Mouse runs up with his little medical student bag. And it's the referee. And he says, oh, I can't treat you, ref. You might give me a red card. So, the uh, ref begs him. says, oh, please, I'll get your booking cancelled. So, Mouse helps him. I mean, he winks like he's going to help him anyway. But, a little bit of comedy, that one. I wasn't really big into Mighty Mouse. Anyway, the safest hands in soccer I definitely was interested in. But the art in this strip, now, it, it looks like somebody's thrown a shop window dummy into the, into the picture. It's like the art of the body, or the... the, the the shorts and the shirt, and that's that, and the ball, that's really good. But the actual, the face looks like it's been done in a rush. No expression on it, and this one down here. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, it's um, it's basically who's he playing for? Can't remember the name of his team. It's Gordon Stewart. Is he? He's a Scottish goalkeeper. Which when I was, you know, when this was being written, did, there was a reputation that Scottish goalkeepers had that they weren't that good. A bit rubbish. I don't know if they've lost that actually, but anyway. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of his team. Tynefield City, that's it. He's the greatest keeper I've ever seen. Yeah, magnificent owner of the safest hands in soccer. They're playing against uh, Everpool. Everpool. Probably from Merseyside. Um, they're reigning European Cup holders. More, more, more pool than ever, I think. Then, but um, they're 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 all over Timefield City. Gordon's keeping a minute. He's stopping everything. What do we have to do to beat this lad? I'm glad we don't come up against him every week. In the dressing room at half time, they're all like, "Well, just keep going, Gordon. Maybe they'll get they'll lose concentration, and we can nick a goal at the other end as long as you can keep them out." So, and he does, he continues to keep them out. Finally, they do get up the other end. What happens? Penalty. They get a penalty. The normal penalty taker, his right foot's numb from the, he was involved in the challenge that led to the penalty. So they're all like, who's going to take it? And they decide, Gordon, the goalie, because he's got, he's got a kick like an angry mule. So... I hope he doesn't miss, otherwise it will be panic stations to get back to goal. Well, it's all gone pitch black, suddenly. There was some foreshadowing. It's a nasty old evening, eh, Gordon? Lucky your floodlights are nice and bright. 
the new ref only just been installed compliments for our supporters club what do you want us to do ref go off can't oh, look at they, they, they can't even find a tunnel is that dark but the lights come back on so they're just like I hope it don't put you off too much, Gordon. We bit the story that. I'm not sure why it's there. Just spread, stretch it out, probably. But anyway, Gordon comes up and takes his... Oh no, he's hit the upright, but it bounces back and he nods it in. He's got the rebound while the keeper's still floundering. Well, no goal, it's a goal kick. It is true. The rules state that a penalty taker cannot play the ball twice without another player touching it. We all know that. Gordon didn't, but he's goalie. It's not really up. I don't know. There was like nine other players who could have taken it. Outfield players who are used to shooting. So it's nil-nil. And they got through the game. This Gordon saved everything. Trouble is, readers, we lost the replay 2-0 at Everpool. Though by that time, I had already made a late New Year's resolution to concentrate on saving penalties instead of taking them. A bit of drama. Got Royal Rovers visiting match of the day here. Got pictures of Motty reading the comic. Hard man. Johnny Dexter talking to his manager, Victor Boscovich. He very angrily shouted at Johnny, You keep losing your temper, I don't want you to lose your temper. You're gonna get you're gonna get sent off and suspended and so Johnny enlists uh, the help of one of his teammates to uh, keep him keep him calm because if Victor Boscovich sees him losing his temper he'll be dropped. Somebody bumps into him in the uh, canteen and treads on his foot, makes him drop his dinner. Teammate, what's his teammate's name? I suppose he's got a name. Kevin, his name's Kevin. Uh, Johnny Spats floored this bloke in the canteen but Kevin says no. Keep calm, Johnny. Oh, he does, he manages to it through, through a grimace. He then gets a parking ticket. No, Victor's looking out the window, Johnny. Don't, and he's, he's, so he has to be very polite to the traffic warden. Uh, and he, he's all through the week, he's tripping over a dog's lead. Uh, Victor's did like the, the manager slapping him on the back. Well done for keeping your temper, but he's got a great big boil on his back and it really hurts, but he's like, oh, don't worry about it. And um, anyway, Johnny's kept his temper all week, and he's p he's picked again for the game. I don't know why they think he's dropping him for being moody. He's the captain of the club. Anyway, Johnny makes this vital tackle, and uh, before the ball flies off, and here's Boscovich in the face, who loses his temper, runs onto the pitch chasing Johnny, and gets sent off. So, uh, boss. What was that you were saying to me last week about losing my temper? That I was supposed to set an example? Ha! I shall never lecture you again. I'm humiliated. I am distraught. For once, Johnny Dexter has got the better of Vista Boscovich. Did I say Vista Boscovich? I'm not doing it all again just because I did. I don't care. Laurie McManamy with like a tiny cup of tea? I don't know why. Right, well, this is unusual. Roy Race's school days, and it's the sequel to the story in the annual from a year ago. So you've had to wait a whole year to get an, um... I mean, Roy Race's school days wasn't in the comic, I don't think. Not when I read it, anyway. But they're on this cruise that they won last year, last, last year, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it, it's a little like many, there's four other teams from, like, four other schools. That have uh, won, won a place on this cruise. They're mucking about in the swimming pool. Grumpy sportsmaster from one of the other schools comes and stops them mucking about and they accidentally knock him into the pole. So he's got it in for Roy Race right from the very first page. But um, he's, he's trying to punish him, but they said, Well, we don't take punishment from you, we only take punishment from our schoolmaster. So we can't accept your this essay you want us to write. Um, and their PE teacher's like, well, you know, it was an accident. Don't worry about it. Chill out, you're an oldie, mate. Like, Mr. Lamberton is uh, Roy Race's PE teacher. He lets them all go off exploring the uh, ports when they, they arrive. And uh, then old Carker, 
who is the uh, the other the other PE teacher. Um, he's like, you can't let them go on their own. Those troublemakers. It's... Anyway, they're taking a few pictures on the pool, and um, these two criminals are up to smuggling business. They get they they realise they're in the photos, so they jump. These two boys, Roy Race and this Blackie Gray, is like future teammate in Melchester. And the, these two criminals jump them trying to get the camera, but they fight them off. And uh, they get rescued by Old Carker. Old Carker sees all this kerfuffle going on. He's like, I knew that boy was trouble. But all the boys he's wandering around with, because he's escorts his boys, they all leg it. Oh, come back, I forbid you. But they're like, they're off to rescue Roy and Blackie. Good lads. Anyway, they chase these criminals off, which uh, old Cargo's not happy. One of the uh, local witnesses tries to tell him, he is telling the truth. I don't know what country they're in. Old Cargo's got the, got, got the um, he's like, you're telling Lamerton all about it. Lamerton's like, it's okay boys, I believe you. They're playing Cargo's skull in this little mini tournament. Um, now these villains, they've turned up to this game they're hiding in some bushes with a fishing rod. <sighs> uh, honestly, they are. Anyway, the game kicks off. Cock is one of the linesmen. So he keeps flagging Roy offside every opportunity. Uh, disallowing this, disallowing that, calling fouls on this. But the referee, who is from the one of the other teams, talking out the back of your head, mate. Not, not an offside, not fouls, a guy and all this, so he's not getting, he's getting angry and angry at this bloke. Roy does this strong challenge, yet again he's flagging, but the, nobody's taking any notice of him. And, uh, old Lamerton gets frustrated. He's the linesman on the other side. He runs over, there's a shouting match. Ref says, oh, I'll send you both off if you don't pack it in. Anyway. These, in the meantime, these criminals, they're on top of the changing rooms with the fishing rod and they're trying to get the camera. They get the camera up through the skylight and they take the film out and put the camera back. Roy ends up swiping at this ball and he, he, he just narrowly misses old Karka, who gets very, very angry. But what he's done, he's seen these people on top of the uh, changing nuts and he's booted the ball at, at them to try and, like, I don't know, he's trying to knock them off. But um, maybe just draw people's attention to it. But they've gone by the time the ball gets over there. So Karka's like, you did that on purpose. But they examine the scene. And um, they see the skylight's open. But they check, see if anything's missing. And nothing is. Although Blackie's like, I'm sure I put my camera on the bench, not on the floor. He would. It's a valuable thing for cameras. Don't use them anymore. We've all got them on our phones, haven't we? It, it, anyway, that doesn't mean nothing. They come back out. Roy and Blackie score, makes it 2-0. They win that game. Carker is even less happy. So, Blackie realises his, uh, his film's gone. Can't work that out, can he? The next match, they're playing. Uh, no, the other match was a draw, if you want to keep up. So uh, Melchester are leading this little table of four teams. It's still, this is these are the days of two points for a win, though. So it's all play for. Anyway, playing their next game. Bit of a rough drum for time. We're always getting sandwiched. And oh, oh, it's goal to Carford. He lost the ball. See, he got knocked off the ball. And they just punted the hard field. And I don't know what the goalkeeper's doing here. Looks like he's trying to trying to reach for the post so the post can rescue him from the nasty ball. But uh, anyway, anyway, these two villains they've gone back to their boss and they said, "Well, we got the film, but it isn't, it's not the right film. It's an, it was a new film. So you'll need to get hold of this film." Oh dear. Anyway, Melchester Rovers they need an equaliser here. He scored a brilliant goal. He's like, he's trying to lose his marker, so he's ran offside and he's ran back on again just in time for the pass and he scored a wonderful goal after a good pass from Blackie. But old Carker's giving it offside. They back him a little bit here. 
and uh, he threatens to book them or send them off. Anyway, the boss has sent these two villains back. The boss has given them a school uniform where he got that, I do not know, and he says, right, one of you put this on and go on the boat and sneak through their stuff. You'll be in a perfect disguise, disguised as a schoolboy. Have you seen these two villains? I mean, the one who wears the uniform is the big, fat, bald one. I'm surprised these villains haven't been caught, like, years ago, but, you know. Anyway, eventually, Roy equalises in a way that Carker can't disallow it, which is also lucky. But the steward catches this criminal dressed up like Tweedledum. Roy's about to... Um, put in put in the winner and his lace breaks so his boot flies off and it and it just narrowly misses Carker. Carker's like oh you're done I've had enough get off the pitch and don't come back till your boots are fit to wear so he has to go off and find a new lace which takes him a while meantime the old uh, 40 year old schoolboy is uh, pushing his way past the steward who's caught him and he's got away Roy eventually comes back, he actually uses a cord off the blind, he gets a knife out and cuts the cord off the blind so that he can tie his shoelace up. And, um, but it's no good, it's no good. Carker's just running this game away, they can never get the, the much needed winner here, so it's still all to play for. We get back to the boat and their cabin's trashed, so Carker reckons Roy's done it himself. Like, while he was off looking for a shoelace, he's rushed back to the boat, trashed his own cabin, and then rushed back to the game for some reason, just to cause trouble. It would have been someone else. It would have been Carker's room, wouldn't it? Guy's an idiot. Just because he got pushed into a swimming pool. Anyway, Lamerton's not having none of it. But the villains, they've decided they've got to kidnap the boys. There's another game, old Carker's team, they've already lost the game so Roy is cheering them on because he want he wants to keep points out of the other team because Carcass team are a bit out of it really aren't they anyway the boss goes up makes a bit of a friend to Roy reckons he's got some some old programs he tells it like because one of the uh Highwood Carcass team is called one of the Highwood boys scores scores a, a lovely overhead kick and they're um Roy and Blackie are quite impressed with this, and the villain says, oh, I once saw that in the cup final. Uh, Taffy Morgan scored a goal like that for Melchester Rovers in a cup final at Wembley. Oh, that's a famous goal. You saw that? You were there? And he says, yeah, I've got loads of programmes. Come and look at my programmes. Don't go and look at his programmes. There is no innocent way to do that. Yeah, oh, never mind. Anyway, Kids Comic, that's a date. Thanks very much. Oh, dear. He's got a Volkswagen Beetle hidden in the trees, so he drives off. 3-0 to Iwood, so uh, they're in a good position. I think they just got to uh, get, they reckon they've got to win the next game. They only need a draw to be the champions. And when you're, if you're the champions, you get to play like a local team. Anyway, this policeman was watching this, this criminal boss, and he's asking the teacher there as a figure of authority. He says, uh, do you know this man? I saw him talking to that boy. He said, they're not my boys. Uh, they're from Melchester, their names are Race and Grey. I wouldn't put anything past them. He's asked the wrong person there, and he. Next afternoon, Melchester Rovers, they're playing the next team. I think it's Port Dean. Yeah, Port Dean. So, they're doing okay. And, Louis just trying to do it on his own here. Keeping the keeper under pressure. Carter's having great fun telling Lamerton that the police think Roy is involved with a criminal. Continues on page 97. It's featuring here. The, the guy's gone to Munich. The editor of the Roy Race. Don't know why he's gone to Munich. Going to, oh, it's going to, going to the Olympia, Olympia Stad, is it? Olympia Stadion. Olympic Stadium in Bayern Munich. Anyway, he's very happy to be there. Oh, I see. This is where Forrest won the European Cup, was it? Beat Malmo. Triple Francis scored. Okay, lots of old stuff about football. Boy race talking, talking about how good the FA Cup is. And uh, look back at the 70s, because there was a couple of uh, lower division teams won the FA Cup in the 70s. 
Jeff Jordan, Phil Parks, Tony Woodcock, blah blah blah. Not as many Arsenal players in this issue. Shame. Anyway, back to Roy Race's school days. A goal to Melchester. Port Dean have drawn level, apparently. Uh, Roy's goalkeeper's just collapsed. There's no explanation for that at all. So what is it? One all. It's one all. And it looks like that's the way it's finished. Anyway, at half time, Lemerson breaks the news to him that Carker is taking them all to an, an opera in that evening. So all the schoolboys are really happy about that. Anyway, they go out and play the rest of the half. Roy and Blackie have got this special... I'll just point out he's called Blackie because he's got black hair, even though this was written in this... Well, it would have been written in 1980, but um, even though it was written back then, he's named Blackie because he had black hair. Just, just in case anybody was worried. Anyway, this this throw-in routine they've got, he just throws it into space and Roy legs it after it. Gives Roy a clear chance, and he scores! Roy's going to make it free. Well, Roy doesn't want to go to the opera. He wants to go see this weird guy in his programmes. So he's taken a shot right at the end of the match. Keep it to save it. But uh, they still won 2 1. And he runs into the post deliberately and hurts his foot. And he makes out he's too injured to go to the opera. Because he can't go to the opera with a bandage on the foot. So Blackie says, I'll stay and look after him, keep him company. As soon as everybody's gone, they're off to meet this bloke. They got on a boat with him and he takes them to this island. It's the only house on the island. So, um, I mean, even if they didn't, they, they don't know he's a criminal, but they're not suspicious of anything. I just want to see this bloke's football programmes. He walked up to them in a football match. Anyway, as soon as they get in there, he tells them, you know, we're, we're part of a criminal gang and you take pictures of us and we want your camera film. And they're like, well, you can't have it. So he locks them up. Anyway, they're in this room. And they're having a poke about in this room. It has been noticed they're missing now, but um, it's night time now. The teacher's like, well, they'll get back late. I'm sure it was just to avoid the opera. You can understand, because he's been at the opera now. Anyway, they're rooting around in this room and they find this trapdoor. Basically, they hide in the trapdoor. Guy comes in, he can't find them, and runs off to tell the boss leaving the door open. So they climb out of the trap door and they escape. In the meantime, well, Mr. Lamerton, he's, he's waited till morning and they haven't turned up for breakfast and he's still going to go, oh, give him a few more minutes. Maybe they've gone for a walk. We got back when we was all asleep and then gone for a walk before we got up. Yeah, that sounds right. I think this bloke should be struck off the teacher's register. Do they struck teachers off or just sack them off? The alarm's been raised back on the island, and uh, Roy and Blackie, they've, they've hit up a tower. And why do people always go upstairs to hide? They can, you know, they're never going to get trapped. But there's no way off the island, you see. They, they, this. So, anyway, eventually the teachers go to the police. And the guy who was talking to Carker said, All right, I, I know... I know who this guy is, but we were following him, we know where he lives, we've just got no evidence on him, they're just too good, I mean, they don't seem that clever to me, but, they go, they go to the island on a police launch, in the meantime, they're getting a bit desperate, they've got guns, Roy and Blackie are still holed up in this tower, and they're trying to bat their way in, so, they put everything in front of the door and they're actually climbing out the window of the tower, which the, the police, hey, get back in there, it's too dangerous. Yeah, these guys with guns coming through the door. Roy is hanging out the window. I mean, these these doomed, these gangsters are doomed now. They're just trapped on the island now, the police are there and they've got evidence now. They bust in, but Lamerton, he storms up the stairs of this tower and he takes, takes the boss out with a right hook and a left hook. I don't know what the other two are doing. Maybe they've only got one gun, but he's taking him out. Quite brave of his teacher. Quite foolhardy, but brave. The film all the time was in the in the, the uh, developing lab on the boat. They've got a developing lab on a boat. Why wouldn't they have a developing lab on a boat? It's a tourist thing, I suppose. 
cops taking these criminals away. While all this has been going on, Roy's team have had to start the last match with like nine players. They could have put two reserves in, but they've decided, no, we'll play with nine because they're bound to be back at some point. They are, they are obviously under siege, but uh, eventually they can see the goal. We can no longer wait for race and grey. We'll have to get the reserves on after the uh, horses bolted that a little bit, isn't it? Anyway, Mr. Lamerton rushes back. No, they're here, they're here, and he puts them on, and then they score two goals. One each, and they've won. Got a nice little trophy. Get back to Blighty. Uh, Roy's full of it. His parents are like, just wait until we tell him our news. And he's like, Roy's like, oh, look at the cup, look at the cup we've won, isn't it great? Yeah, Blackie and I nearly didn't play in the final match. We accidentally got picked up with some local gangsters. It all happened because it's like, Roy, let me tell you. No, no, Roy, we got something to tell you. It's all happened because of some snaps we took. And like you see, we didn't realise these chaps were in the back of the... All right, anyway, they totally finally get him to shut up. Just as he shut, they get him to be quiet. He says, oh, no, I've got Blackie's photos. And he cycles off and goes goes around to Blackie. And they say, while he's going, they say, invite him to tea. We have a special guest. He's like, oh, OK. Uh, anyway, Blackie comes back. <coughs> And it's Ben Galloway, captain of Melchester Rovers. And he's come to tell Roy that he's retiring as a player at the end of the season and he's going to become manager. And he wants Roy and Blackie to be apprentices when they leave school. So, not yet. It's kind of how the last one ended, wasn't it? I mean, I'm assuming this is going to carry on in the next annual. Dad, why didn't you tell me? Okay, shut up, Roy. Oh, just in fashion, you there. Sadly gone. Too young. Anyway, I haven't read this last one. I'm going to read it now. Smith and Son it is. Barry Smith, ex-international soccer star, was a manager of third division club Grandon Town and was helped by his 17-year-old son Danny. In recent training, Barry had his squad playing a lot of five-a-side football and Danny was beginning to wonder why. Okay, big mystery that. Quite a sudden switch from normal training, Dad. It's a secret for the time being, Danny. Don't even let his staff know. Anyway, Manny's very happy about something. We've been accepted to play in the Daily Globe Five-A-Side Knockout Championship. Well, that explains playing five-a-side, doesn't it? Six players were selected and make the trip to London. They've gone up early to do some sightseeing. Oh, right, the, tour the tournament's going to be played at Wembley Pool, right next to Wembley Stadium. So they've gone to have a look at Wembley Stadium. See Big Ben, the Houses of Parliament, some poles. A couple of players have spent too long sightseeing and they're not going to make the tournament. So Danny is going to play in goal and the goalie is going to play as defender. A uh, makeshift team did well. He's saving it all with his feet, old Danny. And uh, and they, had, they managed to hit a winning goal right at the end. So uh, they're through the first round. But there's been a big electricity breakdown in London. The whole city snowed up. It's one giant traffic jam. Two missing players are obviously going to be caught up in that. Now, although they've reached the semi-finals, uh, the goalie who was playing outfield has taken a knock. They've only got four fit players left. It'd be a disaster if you have to pull out of the tournament. Not a disaster, a disappointment really. So Barry Smith, the dad, is going to, going to play. He's an ex-England star apparently. Says he'd just go on to be some nuisance value. But he's playing quite well. Uh, but Danny lets a goal in. He had no chance, apparently. So and none of the goalies have seemed to be much cop in this comic. They're not going to give up. Let's show these first division guys we have every right to be playing against them. They're playing against first division. They're a third division team. And they managed to get another goal. And they managed to equalise. So that's good. Got proper commentator there. Must be televised. Oh, there's no way through for Barry. It's two against one. Look at Andy Watts making a run. To me, boss, now. But incredibly, oh, brilliant. They were expecting a pass, and he darted between the pair of them. He scores, but he's hurt himself. He can't, he, they've won the game, but he can't risk playing in the final. Anyway, these two players come back. It's a thrilling match. It's 2-2 two -two right near the end, but it's Old Castle who snatched the winner. Who are we supporting? Grandon. So, uh, unfortunately, they run us up. £200 goes to Barry Smith. Congratulations, you and your team have helped make this tournament a great success. Thanks a lot. 
blackouts, lost players, a golden goal and much needed money for the club. What a day this has been, Dad. You bet, Danny. But you forgot my medal. They're always great to win, especially when you're a manager. So he's happy with his runners-up medal. That's the end of that. Not very good again. I mean, it's okay. It's nostalgic for me. But if you haven't read Roy Rovers when you was a little kid, it's just a load of rubbish, really, isn't it? Sad to say. Anyway, 1982 next time. So, hopefully that'll be good. That's it now. So, we'll be back um, with a dread on Friday. And... I don't know what I'm doing next Monday. And I might do an extra one in the midweek. Because it's a long weekend at the moment now. We've got a bank holiday. So, we'll see. Alright. Bye!